Hi, everyone. A very good afternoon and thank you for joining us so once again. We're just about to start. We are in, uh, as you know, we are in the series of the Brand USA 2.0 series of webinars that have been launched, not only to give information and educate the travel trade, but to encourage travel to the US later this year, next year and onwards. Uh, tra travel Biz Monitor is extremely proud to partner with Brand USA in this, this initiative. What can we say, but except for the fact that we're going through really, really tough and unprecedented times, especially for the travel industry. We all hope that all of this will pass soon enough and we'll be back to doing our regular traveling that we're all so used to. In the meanwhile, I'd like you to sit back and in, enjoy this webinar, which will give you a lot of information, a lot of training and a lot of uh, worthwhile tips on how to get your clients to go back to the US again and again in the next couple of years. Uh, before I get into this, uh, the start of this web webinar, I'd like to introduce our presenters for this afternoon. We have Paul Nowak, the Director of Global Development of Choose Chicago. And Paul's actually woken up very early in the morning. He's joining us all the way from Chicago. So I'd like to thank him for that. Next, we have Ms. Bhavika Jariwala, who's Director Travel Trade India for Brand USA. She will be presenting on New Orleans and Alabama. And then we have Ka Kaveri Kathuria, Assistant Manager Marketing for India for Lake Tahoe We Visitors Authority. Before I hand this over to Bhavika, I just have a few quick tips for all, all of you who are listening in. Please keep all your mics and webcams off at all times so that you would be able to hear the, the presenters and watch the videos clearly. The Q&A option is, is the one that is available for you to ask any questions that can be viewed by all our, our presenters of, about their respective destinations. We will address, we, at least we will attempt to address all your queries after the pre presentations are over during the Q&A session. So please click on the Q&A uh, icon that you see on your screen to put in your questions. We also have some very interesting polls uh, in the poll section. If you see the poll section, we have some very interesting polls there. And we'd like you to go in there and, and uh, cast your vote for our polls because that will help the brand USA strategize for the future of the Indian market. At any point of time, if you feel your audio is getting mixed up or due to low in internet internet connectivity, please re refresh your page and also keep the email with your unique webinar joining link handy so that you can click on that link at any time if you want to rejoin due, due to any unforeseen technical glitch. As in when we play the videos, please press the continue button which may pop up on your on your internet if your internet connection is fluctuating with these uh, housekeeping announcements i'd like to welcome you uh, once again and hand this over to bhavika the the agenda uh, for today is like i said will be chicago which will be presented by paul in a little while new new orleans in alabama will be will be presented by bhavika and lake Lake Tahoe will be presented by, by Kaveri. Uh, I've already briefed you about the Insta poll and the QA, so I'd now like to hand over to Bhavika. Thank you, Sheldon. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. A big warm welcome to today's webinar. So, as you know, Brand USA is the official destination marketing organization for the United States. Uh, and we also work very closely with our city, region, and state tourism boards to promote the diverse destinations across the country. So today we're going to help you discover four amazing FIT destinations uh, with Chicago in the Midwest region, as you see up on your screen in the state of Illinois, Alabama, New Orleans in the Southeast, and Lake Tahoe in the West. As we can see from the poll results as well, going forward, leisure travel will return first uh, with FIT holidays in demand, along with self-drive holidays with extended stays in each destination. And instead of doing eight cities in 15 days, uh, there's going to be a massive shift uh, resulting in longer holidays in each region. So today's presentation will really help you create new products uh, that can fulfill this demand when you're ready for business again. And with that, I will pass it over to Paul to tell us a little more about the popular city of Chicago. Over to you, Paul. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for logging in. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, and I really appreciate you all taking the time uh, to learn a bit more about Chicago. Um, I know these are kind of difficult times and, and we're just uh, looking forward to sharing the story of Chicago with you and, and welcoming your visitors to Chicago um, once things uh, start to return to normal again, uh, hopefully as soon as possible. Um, so um, starting out, I, I wanted to tell you that Chicago um, is a very large city it's the third largest city in the United States um, with a population of over 9 million people living in the greater Chicago area. Uh, and what this means is that there uh, are options for everyone, uh, no matter what your passion is, no matter what you're interested in, uh, Chicago is a city that can offer um, anything you can think of to your clients. Um, Chicago is also the uh, city of uh, modern architecture. It is the home of the skyscraper. Uh, the first ever skyscrapers were built in Chicago, and Chicago architects are still designing uh, some of the tallest uh, and most impressive modern architecture in the world, uh, like the Burj Khalifa in Dubai and the Jeddah Tower going up in Saudi Arabia are designed by Chicago architects. Uh, and lastly, Chicago is a coastal city. So you're going to see a lot of imagery about uh, beaches and Chicago's lakefront. Uh, one of the nicknames for Chicago is the Third Coast. Uh, and that's because it is a, a city on uh, a freshwater lake uh, that's the size of a small sea. Uh, so starting off here, um, I wanna tell you how your clients are going to get to Chicago. Uh, they're gonna fly through O'Hare International Airport. Um, I'm sure when aviation returns to normal again, a lot of these flights will resume, uh, but there are direct flights on Air India from Delhi. Uh, we also have five daily flights from the GCC region, uh, connecting through Dubai, Oman, and other Middle Eastern destinations. And your clients can also connect through uh, areas like uh, London Heathrow Airport in the UK, Frankfurt Airport, uh, and uh, via Turkish Airlines. So uh, the options are pretty much endless when it comes to flying to Chicago. Uh, and once you're in Chicago, as you can see from the map, uh, it is in the center of the country, uh, which means it's very easy to include Chicago in a multi-city center itinerary. So if your clients want to fly in to an incredible cosmopolitan city break in Chicago, uh, and then fly two hours to Florida immediately after that, they can do that. And there's uh, more than 20 flights a day to, to destinations like Florida or uh, California uh, or New York or Washington DC from Chicago's O'Hare Airport. Uh, it is actually the most well-connected airport in the United States. The only airport in the world with more connections is uh, London Heathrow Airport. Uh, Midway Airport is Chicago's second airport. And if you are a fan of sending your clients on Southwest Airlines domestically once they're in the United States, um, Midway Airport is the number one hub for Southwest Airlines in the United States. Um, so moving on, this is a city map of Chicago. Um, what you're seeing here is uh, the loop. Uh, right in the center of the city is the public transit uh, that your clients can take. That's what these colored lines are. Uh, it's two dollars and fifty cents a ride, uh, and you can buy weekly passes. Um, I just like something like the Tube in London, if you've experienced that before. Uh, you can pretty much get anywhere on Chicago's public transit. It's a great option. Uh, you're seeing three green um, dots in the center there. That's the theater district. Uh, I'll also talk to you about the orange dots along the Chicago River, uh, and those are water taxi spots. You can take a, a taxi for $5 plus tax to Navy Pier, uh, all the way down to the museum campus in the bottom right of the map. Uh, and I'll talk about the museum campus uh, in a little bit. Uh, and then in the center, you see the Art Institute of Chicago, uh, which is near Millennium Park, the home of that famous Cloudgate sculpture known as the Beam, which you saw in the first image of the presentation. And then the last two things I wanna point out are the yellow lines you see in the center of the map on the top are the Magnificent Mile and State Street. Those are Chicago's famous shopping districts. Uh, and I'm sure your clients would love to frequent that as well. Uh, the nice thing about all of these different attractions is this entire map from top to bottom uh, is probably about six kilometers. Uh, it's a flat city, it's very walkable, and easy to get around. Um, and so just give you some context of what I'll be talking about. So some highlights in Chicago, uh, I just want to point out a few things here. Um, Condé Nast uh, is a world travel magazine, if you're familiar with it, um, and they survey their readers um, every year on what they believe are the best large cities in the United States to visit. In the last three years in a row, they voted Chicago as the best large city in America to visit. Um, so don't just take my word for it, Chicago is an incredible destination, uh, and the Condé Nast readers uh, believe that as well. 
Um, and you can see some other great accolades on there, uh, like the Roby House by Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, named a UNESCO World Heritage Site last year, um, and more. So I'd encourage you to go to truechicago.com to learn more about uh, the destination. Um, and um, moving on, I do want to talk to you about the public transit. Um, so uh, I did mention that we have the L uh, that your clients can take around the city of Chicago. Um, we also have buses. Uh, you can use the same card uh, from the L as the Chicago public transit on buses. Um, and I mentioned the water taxis. Uh, taxi is a very easy way to get around as well. Uh, and the nice thing about taking taxis in Chicago is they're very affordable. It's unusual to ever pay more than $15 for a taxi ride, pretty much anywhere you want to go downtown. Um, taxi rides from the airport uh, average about $35 to $40. Um, and then uh, lastly, we do the bike share program called Divi, and your clients can use that to get around the city. Um, so it is a very large city, as I mentioned. You can see Chicago's coast uh, in this image here. Uh, there are over 56 museums in Chicago and 5,000 restaurants. In fact, there's 250 theaters in Chicago, which is even more than New York City or London. So I'm going to talk about some of Chicago's main attractions in the short uh, time that we have. Um, and all of these attractions uh, are available on the City Pass, uh, as well as the Go Chicago card by Smart Destinations. Um, the City Pass is, is $109, um, and it includes the attractions I'll mention shortly. Um, and the Go Chicago card by, by Smart Destinations has multiple options that you can collect to these main attractions, as well as different tours and bike tours uh, and segway tours. So the first two you're seeing here are the Sky Deck in Chicago. That's on the Willis Tower. Um, that was the tallest building in the world for over 20 years. Uh, and it's the tallest observation deck in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, and uh, that's that got the ledge uh, on the right uh, with the kid doing a handstand. Uh, that's a glass box where you can see straight down um, over 100 stories in the air. Uh, the one on the left is the Tilt Attraction. And that's part of 360 Chicago on the John Hancock Building. Um, and uh, that has a hydraulic window that tilts you over the edge of the building. There's also a bar on site, so you can enjoy um, cocktails or non-alcoholic cocktails um, while you uh, look at the sunset. Um, I think that both observation decks are worth doing if you have the time on your visit. I think the sky deck is better during the day because it's such an immensely tall building. You can see uh, three states from there. Um, and um, the 360 Chicago, I think, is a uh, great attraction at night um, when you can see the city lights and the skyline from the perspective of where the John Hancock Center sits. Uh, the next uh, I'll talk about is the museum campus. So these are the three buildings that you saw on that little peninsula on the Lake, on Lake Michigan uh, earlier. Um, and uh, this includes the Field Museum of Natural History. You're seeing an image of Sue, the famous Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, fossil that's home uh, at the Field Museum. That's the largest, most complete T-Rex fossil ever found in the world. Uh, every bone that you see in that picture is a real dinosaur bone. Uh, the only one that's not is the skull. Uh, the skull is next to it, which you can't see in that picture, uh, because it's so heavy that the frame uh, of the dinosaur could not hold up the skull. So that's a, a cast model. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, the Shedd Aquarium is right across the street from the Field Museum on the Museum Campus Park. Uh, it's only a five-minute walk, not even. Uh, and that is home to 32,000 aquatic animals, uh, beluga whales, penguins, uh, all sorts of aquatic wildlife from all over the world. Uh, kids love that uh, museum as well. And then the other planetarium is just down the street from those museums. That is the first planetarium built in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, one great thing about that is there's uh, great movies that you can see, uh, tours of the cosmos and learn about space. Uh, and a big theater with a live announcer taking you on that journey uh, through space. Uh, the next two attractions that are on the City Pass is the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, this is a museum that you could spend days in, uh, just like the Field Museum. Uh, it has art from all over the world. In fact, it's got the most French Impressionist artwork of any museum in the world outside of the Louvre in Paris, uh, but many great American art artists as well, as Indian artists and Chinese artists. Uh, truly something for every art lover. Uh, and then finally, I want to mention the Museum of Science and Industry. Uh, this is actually the largest science museum in the Western Hemisphere. The only one that's larger is in Germany. Uh, and this museum is so big uh, that j in just one small wing of the museum, uh, there's a German U-boat submarine captured during World War II that you can tour. 
Uh, what you're seeing in the image there is the uh, space and weather exhibit where you can learn about uh, tidal force, tsunamis, tornadoes, and lightning. Uh, really incredible museum. Kids love this museum. You could spend multiple days and not see everything there. So again, all of those I just mentioned are available on the city pass. Um, talking about Chicago's architecture, uh, so uh, Chicago is home to not only skyscrapers, but also incredible architecture by famous architects like Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, and you can tour more of his homes in the Chicagoland area than any other place in the world. Uh, there's walking tours, segue tours you can do. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright structures the Roby House, the Uni Unity Temple in Chicago, were actually named UNESCO World Heritage Sites this year. Um, another great way to take in the architecture is the Architecture River Cruise. So that's what you're seeing in this image here. Um, they're typically about 90 minute cruises. Uh, they cost anywhere from uh, 27 to about $37 typically. Uh, they do offer group rates. Uh, and there's a bar on board. Uh, a guide will teach you about Chicago's architecture as you go up and down the Chicago River. It's an incredible way to spend an afternoon uh, when the weather's nice. In uh, Chicago, it tends to be warmer uh, late May uh, through um, early October. You can enjoy the sun, uh, see the incredible architecture, and have a drink while your family watches the skyline go by on the boat. Uh, this was actually the most popular tour in America as rated by TripAdvisor the last two years in a row. More people took this tour than any tour in the United States. In fact, the only tour in the world that was more popular was the Vatican Tour in Italy. Uh, and what you're seeing on the left there is Chicago's River Walk, which is a parkway along Chicago's river. So Chicago has an incredible dining scene. Um, we are known for street food, like Chicago-style hot dogs and deep dish pizzas, of course. Uh, we do also have an incredible array of vegetarian and Indian restaurants. Um, as you can see here, we have over 100 Indian restaurants, and we actually have an Indian neighborhood on Devon Avenue, uh, we call, call it Little India, um, where uh, there's a whole row of Indian restaurants and shops to, uh, to enjoy as well. Um, we also have 25 Michelin star restaurants, or 15 Bib, Bib Gourmand restaurants. Uh, and the great thing about Chicago's high-end dining scene is it's very approachable. Uh, many of them are, are, are rather affordable as well, unlike some other cities with a lot of Michelin star restaurants, uh, like a, perhaps in New York or Paris, where uh, the restaurants are incredible, but sometimes they may be hard to get into and expensive. That is very approachable, and much of them are, are very affordable as well. Uh, so Chicago has an incredible theater scene. Uh, as I mentioned, we have 250 theaters. Uh, there's typically anywhere from two to three Broadway shows going on at any given time in Chicago and they're typically a fraction of the cost as they would be in other cities like uh, London or New York. Uh, for example, Hamilton was in Chicago for a uh, number of years recently, and you can get tickets for about uh, $100 to $150. Uh, in uh, Broadway, New York, there are sometimes $700. So you can save a lot of money by seeing a Broadway show in Chicago. Uh, we have an incredible music scene in Chicago, and uh, of course, uh, we've got a lot of blues history with Chicago-style blues uh, coming from Chicago. Uh, Blues Fest happens in the summer in June. Uh, I encourage you to go to Chicago.com to look at our festival calendar to see what's coming up. Uh, we also have great jazz music, uh, house music originated in Chicago, which really turned into then electronic dance music, which took the world by storm in the last 10, 20 years. Um, so no matter what your musical taste, there's something for you in Chicago. Uh, even our symphony orchestra is the number one rated in the United States. Uh, we've got great shopping in Chicago. So um, I mentioned the Magnificent Mile and State Street. Uh, those are uh, great strips to walk along, enjoy Chicago's architects, do some dining and shopping. Uh, there are two shopping malls on the Magnificent Mile, which are the Water Tower Place and shops at Northbridge. Uh, and then also there's a great shopping center near the airport uh, on your way out called the Fashion Malls of Chicago. The nice thing about that is they can take your luggage, uh, check your bag, uh, and then you do your shopping, and then they'll give you your bag back and a table to repack your luggage, and then there's a free 15 minute shuttle back to the O'Hare Airport uh, to return home. Uh, Chicago is, of course, also known for sports. Uh, we have uh, the Chicago Bulls, which I'm sure you've heard of, with Michael Jordan. Uh, you can go there and see the trophy case for the six championship trophies he won. Uh, the United Center, where the Bulls play, is also home to the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, the Bulls. The Blackhawks play uh, in October through April. 
And then the opposite season, if you're in Chicago in the summer, you can see the Chicago Cubs play at the historic Wrigley Field or the Chicago White Sox play at lowest guaranteed rate field on the south side. Those are both of our Major League Baseball teams. Um, and then uh, the Chicago Bears play American football and the Chicago Fire play soccer together uh, at Soldier Field, uh, which is near the museum campus. So no matter when you visit, there is a sporting event to see with your family in Chicago. Chicago has got an incredible uh, free attractions. Uh, one of the main one is Navy Pier. Uh, they offer fireworks twice um, a week during the summer in May and September. Uh, and you can see these fireworks shows from Lake Michigan and wonderful lake cruises, which launch from uh, Navy Pier. It's also home to a children's museum. You can get deep dish pizza there and other great um, local foods. Shakespeare, Shakespeare Theater is at Navy Pier where you can see shows. And then, of course, you see the Ferris wheel in the background. Uh, and a fun fact, uh, the Ferris wheel was actually invented in Chicago during the World's Fair of 1893. Uh, and uh, the Chicago Cultural Center uh, is another great free attraction. It's right across from Millennium Park, where the Bean is located. And um, there's many free performances there all throughout the year. And what you're seeing in that room there is a performance in the Tiffany Glass Dome. It's the world's largest stained glass Tiffany Dome. If you've seen the Taj Mahal, it has stonework in the interior, much like you've seen the Taj Mahal with terms of stained glass laid inside of it. That's the pattern. It's breathtakingly beautiful. It glitters in the sun, and it's, it's a must-see uh, for your family when you come through. And kind of wrapping up here, uh, we've got Art on the Mart, which is the world's largest digital art display, kind of self-explanatory along the Chicago River. Something great to enjoy that happens in March through December each year. Um, and then um, wrapping up, we've got a great outdoor experience Chicago. Um, you're seeing here uh, North Avenue Beach. Yes, that is a beach right next to Chicago skyline. You can rent wave runners, paddle boards, jet skis, play volleyball. There's restaurants along the lake uh, and great cycling along the lake as well. Um, so it's something that's very surprising to people when they've never been to Chicago before. Um, and we've got incredible events in Chicago. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, they dye the Chicago River green. The Chicago Marathon happens in October each year. And then again, that bottom right photo is that same beach you're seeing from a different perspective at the Air and Water Show, which happens each August. Uh, of course, many of these events won't be happening this year. However, they will be happening again next year. You can count on that. Um, and um, so if you want more information, I really encourage you to go to truechicago.com slash tools. There's lots of tools there in the travel trade. You can always email me with questions. And then don't forget about Brand USA's Discovery Badge. Um, where you can learn about Chicago yourself and get certified as a Chicago Scott platform. And with that, I'll end it with a short video. And if you have any questions, please add them to the Q&A portal and I'll around to answer those. Again, thank you all so much for spending your time to learn more about Chicago. I hope to welcome your clients here in the near future uh, when things are normal.
So thank you, Paul. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to move from the Midwest to the Southeast. So welcome to the famous city of New Orleans, which is located on the Mississippi River. It is located in the state of Louisiana, uh, which is next to Texas. New Orleans is really known for its, uh, it's called the Big Easy and it's known for its round the clock nightlife, uh, vibrant live music scene, and is also the culinary capital of the US, uh, reflecting its history as a melting pot of cultures, including French, African and American. So how do you get here? You can fly into the Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport uh, domestically as well as internationally. New Orleans is connected by Lufthansa, American Airlines, British Airways, Delta Airlines, and United Airlines. The city is only 30 minutes away from the airport by road, which makes it very well located. Uh, just imagine getting off a really long flight, checking into your hotel, and then being in the French Quarter, sipping on a drink and enjoying a live musical performance in no time. Getting around New Orleans is really easy with multiple options. Uh, so the old classic streetcars are, are a charming way and, uh, to experience the city, and they connect you to the French Quarter and beyond. You also have uh, bikes that you can make use of with the 100 mile bike lanes in New Orleans. Uh, it's a great way to explore the city locally. Ferries have also traveled across the Mississippi River since 1827. You can actually take a historic trip across the city on the classic Algiers ferry that you see on the screen. If you're tired of walking around, go ahead and hail a pedicab. It's a fun way to get around the city for short distances. Also, New Orleans limos aren't just for celebrities. Uh, so right from a classic uh, stretch limousine to a sedan, to a van or a bus, the New Orleans uh, limousine companies have the right vehicle for every customer. And you can also make use of Uber and Lyft uh, to get around after a fun night out. Coming to the city's neighborhoods, New Orleans is an eclectic mix of neighborhoods uh, from the funky Bohemian by waters all the way to the Oakland Garden District. There's something for every type of traveler in each part of town, uh, whether you're seeking authentic live music, historic and photogenic architecture for your Instagram, or a vibrant nightlife scene, there's something for everyone. The most popular tourist neighborhood uh, in New Orleans is the French Quarters, which was found in 1718. It has a very romantic, mysterious, uh, and jazzy vibe, and it's known for its bohemian charm, the famous Jackson Square, the steamboat cruise uh, ship Nashes, uh, Bourbon Street uh, for its uh, bars, which are lined up across the corner, its old world architecture, and century-old restaurants playing live music and serving delicious Cajun and Creole cuisine, which goes very well with the Indian palate. Most of the hotels are located in the Central Business District and the Warehouse District. New Orleans is renowned for its food and no itinerary is complete without a visit to Café du Monde that you see on your screen. This is where you can try their traditional New Orleans coffee and beignets. Uh, beignet is a French term for a deep fried shoe pastry which is drizzled with sugar and is served piping hot with black coffee. This is a very authentic New Orleans experience. You can also try a hands-on approach at one of the city's uh, cooking schools where you can learn to cook Creole and Cajun among other local delicacies. This is also a fun family activity. So coming to what's there to see and do, uh, we have a lot of great sightseeing options, uh, whether you want to explore the history of the ghost tour, to shopping, to swamp tours, there's something from uh, for everyone through a local's perspective. You can take the Nashes River Cruise, which is a traditional paddle wheel boat. It has lunch and dinner options on board as well. Visitors who've missed the Mardi Gras Carnival can also visit the Mardi Gras Museum and view the parade artifacts and see how they are made. We also have casinos and a vibrant nightlife. Uh, for foodies, you can take a three hour NOLA food and cocktail tour. For an offbeat experience, the Swamp Tour offers visitors a unique way to see regional wildlife like alligators, snakes, and more. New Orleans is rumored to have a strong presence of ghosts and spirits. 
uh, which is why the night tours are a lot of fun. Uh, so you can either take the vampire or the ghost tour uh, after hours post dinner, which will take you to some spooky places where your guides will tell you chilling tales. New Orleans is also full of outdoor experiences and is very family friendly uh, to keep the little ones busy and active. Riding the streetcar is always a hit with kids of all ages and the same goes for the uh, ferry uh, uh, from Algiers Point. Uh, you can also visit the Audubon Zoo, Aquarium and Insectarium, uh, after which you can have a picnic by the Audubon Park, which is surrounded by green trees and cool breeze. We also have the interactive children's museum, which is a fun uh, attraction for kids. Here's a glimpse of uh, the Louisiana Children's Museum, which opened in August 2019. Uh, the museum has five interactive educative exhibits and a 100 mile long mighty Mississippi water exhibit, making it really fun for the children. The Sculpture Garden is the latest cultural destination for visitors and it provides a unique opportunity for visitors who treasure the arts. It's open last year and is free and is open all seven days a week. It's also located next to the NOMA, which is the New Orleans Museum of Art. For history tours, there's no better city than New Orleans because New Orleans been volleyed between the French and the Spanish uh, from the late 17th century until the United States bought over Louisiana for just mere pennies in 1803. So New Orleans, is, uh, New Orleans is forever shaped by its European heritage. So entire neighborhoods, whole buildings, cemetery crypts, manhole covers, cobble street, uh, uh, cobblestone streets, they are all preserved from the era of the 18th century. So it's really great to walk around the entire city. And of course, it's known for its music and nightlife. The city is 24 seven. Um, there's live music at every corner of French quarters every day. Uh, if you want to go where the locals do, then head, head down to the Frenchman Street, which has a very different vibe from the French quarters. The local dives and music venues will keep you dancing all through the night. And you can also uh, catch a street performance uh, by artists performing classical Louis Armstrong songs. Coming to shopping, which is the most important part of any Indian traveler's itinerary, shopping in the state of Louisiana is tax free. So international visitors receive tax refunds uh, when they shop in Louisiana. Uh, there are plenty of options. Uh, so uh, the Outlet Collection at River Walk is within the city and can be uh, visited at any point of time during the day. You also have the Canal Place for like really good luxury high-end shopping. Uh, so the Outlet Collection is more for great bargains, whereas uh, the Canal Place is more for luxury shopping. Giving you a glimpse of the kind of accommodation options available for your clients in New Orleans, after all the dining, dancing, strolling, I'm sure you need a place to rest. So right from luxury uh, to family friendly, eco-conscious and historic, we've got all kinds of uh, accommodations in New Orleans. I'm now going to take you through some different options. So this is a fashionable uh, Higgins Hotel, which is in the warehouse district. It's opposite uh, the National World War II Museum. Uh, and it's a four stop, uh, four minutes uh, a walk away from the nearest streetcar shop. It has about 230 different guest rooms. Next is the Maison de la Luz, which is a three minute walk from the Lafayette Square. And this is 11 minutes uh, walking from the Audubon Zoo as well. It has 67 luxury suites, and this is a great uh, high end accommodation option. Opening in 2021 is the Virgin Hotel New Orleans, which is situated in the city's warehouse district. It, it will be equipped with 225 uh, chambers. Virgin Hotels is a brand of hotels created by Richard Branson's Virgin Group. The Four Seasons Hotel and Private Residence uh, New Orleans is located within the city's former World Trade Center, as you see on the screen. This hotel will include 341 guest rooms and 92 private residences, and it's uh, slated to open uh, later this year. 
You also have boutique hotel options such as uh, the Hotel Chloe, which is a Queen Anne style building that dates back to 1891. It's set to open in winter 2020 and will have 15 rooms uh, with four suites. So that's about it from me for now on New Orleans. Uh, you can log on to www.neworleans.com. We have a lot of information about the city with sample itineraries, images, and videos available for your use. And we'll now virtually transport you to, the, uh, to New Orleans to give you an introduction to the city. It's really easy to plan a four to five day itinerary in New Orleans. It can also be connected onward to Memphis and Nashville, ending in Atlanta. We'll now move on to our next destination. So welcome to Sweet Home, Alabama. Alabama is located in Southern USA and the main airport here is the Birmingham International Airport. Birmingham is also the largest city uh, in Alabama. As you see on the map, uh, Alabama is well placed uh, in proximity to popular cities like Atlanta, Nashville and New Orleans. Here are some of the top holiday spots in Alabama and on the screen I've put in the uh, driving distances, uh, taking Birmingham as the center. So everything is really drivable just under one or two hours. We'll now deep dive into each of these cities. So starting with Huntsville, it's also known as a rocket city. Uh, it's about 90 minutes drive from Birmingham and can be visited as a day trip. This is also where the US Space and Rocket Center is located. This is much bigger than the one in Houston. And we see a lot of uh, student travelers coming in from India as well here. So people of all generations can feel like an astronaut for the day or the week uh, depending on the program you choose a fun fact here is that this is the same attraction that was featured in the movie zero uh, which was released in 2018 uh, where Shah Rukh Khan trains to become an astronaut Huntsville also offers the largest space camp uh, for children which includes real world application of science technology engineering and maths making it a must do attraction for the student segment The next stop is the Huntsville Botanical Garden, which is located uh, next to the Space Center. It's open year round and it has a very unique picture perfect aquatic garden, a, a spectacular wildflower and nature trail with many specialty gardens. The Children's Garden and the Nature Center located here contains the United States largest butterfly, uh, seasonal butterfly house. You can also enjoy bird spotting here. Children and adults alike will love strolling through the themed gardens that are here, like the dinosaur garden, the space garden, the storybook garden, and much more. You can easily spend three to four hours or your entire day here. For music lovers, you can visit Muscle Shoals, which is an hour away from Huntsville. Muscle Shoals is a collection of small towns in the northwest corner of Alabama and is also referred to as the hit recording capital of the world. So a lot of famous artists like the Rolling Stones, Aretha Franklin, Bob Dylan, Leonard Skinner, 
And more recent artists like Black Keys and Demi Lovato still record their music here at the studios. This is a must to visit for any music lover. Next, uh, coming to Alabama's largest city, which is Birmingham. This is also the financial center of Alabama and the gateway city to enter this state. It's a bustling hub of culture and heritage that's famous for its beautiful golf courses, year-round calendar of entertainment, shopping, and dining. If you're looking for some entertainment off the beaten path, then head to Jip's Pal Place in downtown Birmingham. This is the last juke joint left in the south of the US. Since 1950s, Henry Gibson has been inviting people to his home to enjoy live music and Southern hospitality. Juke joints are bars that are owned uh, with low maintenance uh, uh, and they often have uh, serve alcohol, basic food, and have a jukebox with, a live, um, with live music as entertainment as well. This is a very culturally unique feature of the southern part of the USA and a very, very local thing to do. Next is the Barber Motorsports Museum in Leeds, uh, which is 20 minutes away from Birmingham. This is the world's largest collection uh, of motorcycles. So if you're looking for an adrenaline rush, please head here. This is also the number one attraction in Alabama and is a must do for vintage car and uh, motorcycle lovers. Moving on to the state's capital of Montgomery, uh, this city is home to thriving arts and entertainment uh, with a lot of options for dining and nightlife. For the kids, you have the Montgomery Zoo uh, and the Alabama Safari. Moving down south now to Mobile, uh, it's about three and a half hours away from Birmingham. The fourth city on our road trip is Alabama's oldest city and its most entertaining city. Uh, it's known as the city born to celebrate and has a lot of live music venues, restaurants, and an atmosphere that screams Southern hospitality. Mobile is by the coast and makes for a great stop uh, on your way to New Orleans, which is a two hour drive away from Alabama's white sandy beaches. Mobile is also the birthplace to America's original Mardi Gras and is a sister uh, city to New Orleans. Mobile hosts millions of visitors every year to their month-long Mardi Gras celebrations. It's also known for its fresh Gulf seafood and farm-to-table fare. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach uh, are located at, in the south of Alabama and a great place to enjoy the beach life with fresh seafood, family fun, live entertainment, deep sea fishing, and other soft water adventures uh, with several options of hotels and condos facing the seaside. So if you're looking for the ultimate beach vacation, this is the place to go. The Gulf Shores also boasts of some noteworthy music festivals uh, like the annual three-day hangout fest, which takes place by the sea, as you can see in the image. A lot of travelers attend this fest, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, and has artists like Cardi B, Kaigo, Khalid and the Lumineers performing here. So for more information on Alabama, please visit tourism.alabama.gov. Uh, we'll also be sending you all of the contact details and links as an email uh, once the webinar is over. We'll now play a short video on Alabama to get you there virtually.
So we'll be waiting for you on the other side once we come out of this. With that, we're now moving from the southeast uh, to the west, and we have Kaveri who's going to tell us more about Lake Tahoe. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining in today's webinar. We will now move on to the west coast. So welcome to Lake Tahoe. Uh, when visitors arrive in Lake Tahoe, they realize Lake Tahoe has it all. And why is that so? I think I should be able to tell you in my today's presentation. So uh, Lake Tahoe is the largest alpine lake in the United States. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful lakes, not only in the US, but in the world. And the water is 99.99% pure, which also makes it one of the purest lakes in the world. Let me begin my presentation uh, with a picture of this breathtaking location. Uh, this is Emerald Bay. You can see why it is one of the most photographed places in the world. So in Tahoe, it's everything about national scenery and beautiful destination. Lake Tahoe is located on the California Nevada state line. It's a very accessible destination as it is close to a gateway destination like San Francisco. So if you're traveling by road from San Francisco, it takes about four hours drive. While from Reno, it's about one hour drive and from Sacramento, two hours drive. Also uh, from Vegas and LA, it's about eight hours drive. It's a great destination for self drives, but uh, in case your clients are not opting for self drive and still they want to travel by road, then there's a company called Incredible Adventures who books SIC tours, which is seat and coach tours. To give you an example, if you have have say two FITs who want to go uh, from San Francisco to Tago via road, then you can put them in the FI SIC tours of Incredible Adventures. Moving on to the airport, we do have Reno Tahoe International Airport, which is located uh, in Reno, but uh, we do have shuttle services available, which takes you uh, to South Lake Tower Hotel. This is one of the sample uh, routes, uh, so you can fly to San Francisco and drive to Lake Tahoe, covering Napa Valley and Sacramento on the way. Then from Lake Tahoe, you can go to Yosemite National Park and Mammoth Lakes. So as you can see on the map right now, if you go further down, uh, you can enter Death Valley National Park, which is about three hours drive from Mammoth Lakes. And from here, you have a choice either to go to Vegas or to LA. I would like to recommend going first to Vegas so that you can exit from LA. As I mentioned, Lake Tahoe is a shared, uh, I mean, a shared resource between Nevada and California. So one third of Lake Tahoe is located in Nevada, while two third is in California. So the downtown is not in the middle. In fact, it's at the end of it, and it's highlighted with a yellow star. In this downtown area, the Nevada and California state line just go to the middle of it. Welcome to our downtown area. Trust me, uh, Tahoe, I mean, this is one of the very beautiful pictures that we have of Tahoe. And we have hotels in three distinct locations. So one is downtown Nevada. Second, downtown California, which is close to Heavenly Village and in the Lakefront District. 75% of lodging around the lake is located in South Lake Tahoe and that is what I'm going to focus on today which means the I mean the properties which are located in the South Lake Tahoe area. Well visiting Lake Tahoe is all about the lake so being above it, being by it, being in it or maybe uh, drinking it. So we have over 100 hotels from luxury to boutique maybe uh, some uh, budgeted and uh, boutique kind of hotels as well. So as you can see on the screen right now, uh, the first picture is of Hard Rock Hotels and Casinos. So here you can enjoy the largest outdoor pool experience, which is there in South Lake Tahoe. Then we have many New York boutique, hip, trendy and eco hotels. And Hotel Beckett is example of one amongst them. Third is the picture of Landing Resort and Spa. This is one of the luxury property that we have in Lake Tahoe and it's also by the water. Lake Tower Resort Hotel is example of a three-star property and it's very conveniently located as it's just minutes away from Heavenly Village and Heavenly Ski Resort as well. Apart from these hotels, I, one hotel that I would like to talk about here will be 
um, Edgewood Tahoe. It's one of the luxury property. It got opened in 2018. And trust me, it's a beautiful property for all, and you can book it for all the HNIs. Vacation rentals or private homes are becoming really popular. So you can consider this as an option for families and groups as it is economical at the same very time being convenient. Uh, we have many RV parks and campsites as well. Well, Lake Tahoe is a year-round destination. So in summers, the weather is absolutely amazing. But winters is seven for snow lovers. So we are an outdoor destination, hence we are popular for all the outdoor, outdoor activities, be it hiking, biking, mountain climbing. So we have a lot of hiking trails and our family with kids can do it. It's a fun activity to enjoy the beautiful scenery, nature and clean air. You can also do horseback riding with great views of the lake. This is one of my favorite picture and golf with the view. Lake Town also features exceptional golfing where golfers can enjoy the benefits of high altitude. When in Tahoe, visit one of our many marinas and enjoy water sports. So this is a picture of Ski Run Marina and which is hub of activities. It's a place where you can have, I mean, where you can witness great art, great shopping, fabulous food, fishing and a proximity to nature that you might not feel anywhere else. In Ski Run Marina, you can also enjoy great food with best lake views in Riva Grill, which is a restaurant's name. Well, that's not it. I mean, destination offers a lot of other water sports activities as well. So be it kayaking, paddleboarding options, or you can just rent a jet ski or go fishing. So Lake Tahoe gives you a lot of experiential uh, things as well. So one of them be uh, one of them will be there are restaurants where you can take the fish you caught and they will cook it for you as for your liking. So uh, this is one of the great uh, experience that we have in Tahoe. The South Shore is famous for its sandy beaches, casual bars and restaurants. So you can indulge yourself in fine dining while you know watching the sunset. Now, moving on to the most popular attraction, it's on the first column, second picture, which is MS Dixie 2. So this paddle wheeler truly has many fans. It can accommodate 300 passengers in one go. And at the same very time, it is locals favorite and uh, it is there in most of the Lake Tahoe itineraries. So I would like to uh, recommend this activity in all the Lake Tahoe products. Well, since I've talked a lot about outdoor, you must be wondering that we only have adventurous activities. Then that's not really true because we are popular for nightlife as well. I mean, uh, we have, uh, we do summer outdoor concerts which uh, in all the big artists, be it Lady Gaga, Bruno Mars, have performed at all such concerts. And of course, there's a gaming action in the casinos, which adds up to the city's nightlife. So we have a lot of nightlife, uh, nightclubs, and karaoke nights uh, along with that. Lake Tahoe can help you plan a perfect relaxing gateway with plenty of world-class relaxation and spa places to choose from. Hence, there are a lot of options for those who just want to relax and feel at leisure. Also, you can pamper yourself by shopping in the heavenly village of South Lake Tahoe. It's a fun picture. Lake Tahoe is also a popular destination to get married. Whether it's scenic setting, intimate wedding, or maybe a dramatic gala on the beach, Tahoe South guarantees the best wedding memories. It's a great destination for honeymooners as well as young couples. We are home to 15 world-class ski resorts. And the best three ski resorts on the South Shore are Heavenly, Sierra and Kirkwood. Here in summers, you can enjoy activities like summer tubing, zip lining, wall climbing, uh, which means it's just not popular for the winter and snow activities. Also, uh, kids can enjoy camp programs. So this is very interesting. So it's a camp program uh, at Evenly, which offers unforgettable day of nature, adventure, and fun. In this camp, you know, kids of five to 10 years of age can enjoy, spend an entire day with their leader, leaders, exploring the great outdoors. 
uh, and there are a lot of family programs as well so it's a great destination for families as well skiing is the most popular winter activity even the beginners can learn and ski in lake tahoe well we do not want you to miss heavenly gondola ride which will leave you breathless as you take the panoramic views of the lake uh, of lake tahoe it's on the second column first picture heavenly gondola ride so that's one activity that i would like to recommend both uh, in summers as well as winters well that's not it i mean if somebody is a non skier then they can also uh, go for other snow activities be it ice skating snow tubing sleigh rides etc well these are my contact details in case you have any query please feel free to get in touch with me i will also be sharing with you sample uh, sample libraries and we do have an image gallery so in case you want to use pictures for your uh social media platform or platforms or website then please feel free to use them apart from that we will play a destination video for you which we have created for covid-19 period and it's a great video in case you want to use it on your platforms be it instagram facebook or website then please feel free to share as well so here are a destination video for you All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of the destinar, uh, destination webinar. Before we close, I want to take you through some of the trade tools that we have for your use. So this is our travel trade website. Uh, you can find a lot of free images, videos, themed itineraries, as well as uh, receptive tour operator information. And our online training program is called the USA Discovery Program. With a lot of you are logged on. Uh, uh and register with uh, we have currently 45 badges we also have a badge uh, for new orleans chicago and lake tahoe so it's a great way to learn about the destination we also have experiential badges like fly and drive and winter sports each module takes you about 15 to 20 minutes to do and currently we are running a really cool contest called the double dhamaka contest uh, all you need to do is complete any 10 badges till tomorrow and send us uh, an email with your favorite usa photograph to be eligible uh, to enter the contest and you stand a chance to win a bo speaker our latest entrant uh, is the uh, for the travel trade tools is the go usa tv this is a free video on demand app and is really like the netflix of the travel and tourism industry uh, we have a lot of great content for you to see uh, right from road trips to national parks uh, to culinary adventures to music there's something for everyone uh, this app can be downloaded uh, free of cost on the app store as well as the google play store it's also available as a uh, as a channel on the amazon fire tv stick if you have one so continuing with our webinar series our next webinar is on the 20th of may at 3 pm uh, so you'll find the details to register on the travel biz monitor website this webinar is going to cover an overview of utah california philadelphia and mammoth lakes so please be sure to register so thank you for listening and this brings us to the end of the webinar a big thank you uh, and a shout out to our partners at true chicago new orleans and company alabama office of tourism and lake tahoe visitors authority for participating in the webinar uh, travel biz monitor will be sending you an email with the trade tools links and the recording of the webinar along with a feedback survey 
So I will see you again on the 20th of May. Till then, take care and stay safe. Over to you, Sheldon. Oh, yeah. So just, just before we go on that, the two very common questions and one of them that you addressed just now, Babavik, I was just monitoring the question and answers. One, one of them was for Paul, actually, which, which asked for, uh, you know, Paul, there, there's been a lot of, there are very large attractions in Chicago. So people there just want to know how will this be dealt with, uh, with the so social distancing that's required post, post COVID. I had a couple of questions coming in on this, and if you could just address that one question for the audience, please. Yeah, I'm happy to. So, uh, first of all, you know, any um, actions that are taken by our attractions and the city of Chicago are going to be, um, you know, directed by our mayor as well as the governor of the state of Illinois, which they've been doing a great job so far in keeping the people safe and ensuring that, um, uh, you know, uh, we're. Uh, making our way through this uh, terrible virus uh, as safely as possible. Um, they will be announcing um, as we open uh, the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago, um, new guidelines for uh, the attractions to follow in order to make sure that their guests stay safe. Um, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. However, I'm sure it's, it's likely that it's gonna look something like maybe um, timed um, attraction um, passes uh, so that instead of waiting in line, you have a certain amount of time to show up and, and go do the attraction. That way there's not long queues forming. Um, uh, and so uh, I'm sure things like that will be set into place. Um, on our website, truechicago.com, we do have a COVID um, update section, um, which will share uh, with you and your clients um, when the attractions start to open. Um, uh, and what type of safety measures will be in place at the attraction across Chicago. Um, so please, uh, you know, keep checking our website for that. Um, and, you know, more information will be coming out um, about that in the coming months as, um, you know, things start to wind down and, and attractions start to open again. But that is a very good question. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, Bhavika, one last question for you. A lot of them have just been, uh, I, I think we've been absolutely clear uh, while the, the four presentations were on, and I don't think there's any real question regarding the presentation. But the question that's actually come up is, can they all get a copy of the, the PowerPoint, the copy of the links? And all, also a few of them have actually asked for a pre presentation and an itinerary for seven to 10 days. Can you Can you address that quickly? Sure. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending you a recording of the webinar along with the presentation PDF files. Uh, we'll also be sending you the travel trade website for each destination where you, uh, you can access a lot of information. Uh, so different kinds of themed itineraries, everything will be available there. So we'll be sending this to you by tomorrow. I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Great. Th thanks a lot. I don't think there's any other, other questions. So, so with your permissions, can I wrap up? Sure. Yeah. So th thank you very much, ladies and gen gentlemen. We've had over five five hundred people on this webinar today, and I'm very happy for you to spend the time. I'm sure you found this very re rewarding, and we look forward to having you back with us traveling to the U.S. Thank you so much. Stay safe, and until the twentieth of May, bye bye.